The Lord be with you. And good evening. Welcome to our midweek Advent Vespers here for December the 2nd, uh, where we're going to be focusing on the psalm this w- of the week here that the Lord has given us. Uh, Vespers, the order of Vespers is found on page 229. And a reminder uh, that if you don't have a copy of a hymnal or a service book, please immediately get in contact with us. We'll make sure you get one because we're going to be doing this on Monday mornings and Wednesday evenings through all of the season of Advent. And of course, you don't have to view them at that time. You can view them whenever it's uh, uh, suitable to you. But for our purposes, we will hold them for sure and be ready with them at those times. So gather yourself now for the Order of Vespers, page 229. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. Psalm 80, verses 1 to 7, which are the basis for the sermon this evening, we will speak them in unison. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, How long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Our office hymn this evening is number 339, Lift Up Your Heads, You Everlasting Doors.
The reading is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. And just a reminder, that if you are interested in a deeper dive into that triumphal entry text from Mark 11, go watch the Bible study video on that from Sunday. But Psalm 80, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from his sav- our Savior Jesus Christ. Fellow baptized saints, all who are longing to be restored, longing for an end to the tension and for a promised renewal of all things in our Lord Jesus Christ. No, I'm not just talking about the pandemic. It's certainly part of it, but only a symptom of the greater sickness and death that has infected creation. The Lord would not have us pray for the end of COVID and say nothing about the more pervasive virus of sin. The Lord would not have us stop halfway and completely ignore our underlying health condition. The Lord would not restore us to health only for us to die later anyway. No, this is not the restoration he has in mind. This is not the restoration God's people cry for in our text. It must be fuller, greater, eternal. That's why on these Advent evenings, we're going to join our prayers with God's people of old. We're going to take up these ancient psalms, these faithful prayers of the saints, and realize that they are our prayers too, that we share the same longings, wait in the same tension for the same faithful action of our Lord. We will pray that he ends the pandemic. We will pray for him to restore us, and we will pray for him to keep going with that revival through our brokenness and weakness and shortcomings. Yes, even our death. You see, when God's people first prayed this psalm, they had been scattered, much like he scattered the people for their false worship at the Tower of Babel. God scattered his people for their idolatry In Jerusalem, they were in exile. 
conquered by the foreign king God sent, that they might lose his holy temple in Jerusalem and be reminded who it is that gives them life and makes them a people. They wouldn't listen any other way. Oh, he tried. And so he gave them this prayer to sing as they pined for his temple from Babylon. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Restore us. We finally admit it. We are not right. We've ruined everything, and we need you to act. Hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, that you alone are our leader. All we can do is follow you, and if we don't, if you don't lead, we won't go. Act, Lord, for the sake of your mercy. Don't deal with us according to our sins, but hear us because you are merciful because you are our shepherd, because you have made us who we are and given us all we have. Don't ignore us. Don't turn away. Don't be angry. We're waiting for you. God's people had been embarrassed. They were the laughing stock of all the other nations. It was bad enough that God had sent them into exile to get them to listen, but to be the butt of everyone's jokes to be the example that other nations used when they wanted to make fun of something. Well, this was too much. And so sorrow and grief covered every part of their lives. You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. They were ashamed of themselves and cried out for God to restore them as a people. But aren't we the same? Do we not want to see the church restored to the honor it once had in our land? Do we not mourn and grieve when we see the decline of, our, of the church here in Canada? Do we not check our tongue before we speak, lest we be embarrassed or laughed at, isolated or ostracized? That's why God gives us this prayer. He has dealt with this before. He is still in control. He knows what he's doing. And so he puts these faithful words into our mouths. Stir up your might, O Lord, and come. Do you hear what he would have you say to him? Get worked up, Lord. Hear our prayers and get fired up. Stir up your power. Do your saving thing. It's been long enough. Let your face shine. For when you do, we will be saved. God did restore his people to the promised land after a 70-year exile. They returned to rebuild their lives. But then God did something greater. He's always doing something greater. He came to them personally in the new temple of his flesh. He gathered them together as his own body, his own bride, bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. His church. Not only were they restored as a people, they were restored and made so much more as the church. Not only was their worship restored, it was restored and fulfilled in the New Testament, the holy communion of heaven and earth in the body and blood of the God-man. Not only was their health restored, it was restored and made eternal in the life of God into which they were then baptized. God is always doing something greater. And in our present situation, it certainly is no different. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine. The Lord puts these words into our mouths because this is what he wants to hear from us. This is how he would have our hearts cry to him, because he is going to act as he has faithfully done before. Our health will be restored. His true people will be restored. True worship will be restored, because faith in Christ is always vindicated and given more 
in great glory, for he is the Lord of heaven and earth, and he's just getting started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue with the canticle on page 231. <laughs> Let my prayer rise before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Grant us true humility after the likeness of your only Son, that we may never be arrogant and prideful and thus provoke your wrath, but in all lowliness be made partakers of the gifts of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, by the patient endurance of your only begotten Son, you beat down the pride of the old enemy. Help us to treasure rightly in our hearts what our Lord has borne for our sakes, that after his example we may bear with patience those things that are adverse to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you for joining us for this midweek Advent Vespers. God grant you that deep peace as you wait for his reappearing. See you on Sunday.